Hello, my name is Danielle Stein Fairhurst, and I'm a financial modeler and a Microsoft MVP. So what I thought might be fun is to take a look at some of the financial modeling World Cup cases. Now, in each stage, there are usually three cases which you have two hours to solve. Cases two and three are typically not easy. They're supposed to be challenging. But case one is usually a really nice little warm-up case that you should be able to get through in about 15 minutes or so. So they're usually just classic financial modeling calculations like loans, investments, depreciation, valuation, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go through some of the cases to look at how they might be solved. Now, these are not the cleanly formatted spreadsheets that you're probably used to seeing me do. Sometimes we're given a template, but today we are building a model entirely from scratch. And I'm going to do it as quickly as possible, just like you do when you're competing live. So it won't be perfect and I won't always follow best practice. Right. Now, in this one, we have got a project which we are financing partially with debt and partially with equity. And we need to pay back the loan and then work out the rate of return to equity using the IRR function, of course. Let's take a look. So here's the case, and we have been given five questions, but in the interest of keeping this video short and snappy, I'm just going to tackle the first three questions for now. So here is the problem that we've been given. So you're financing a project that will cost $100 million and we're given a date K. Okay. So we've not been given a file to work on. So let's just copy the instructions from here into a completely blank spreadsheet. So the first piece of information, we've got a date. So let's just copy that in there. And so that's a starting point. We are told that we've got five years and we've got annual cash flows. And then we've got $75 million of debt and $25 million of equity. So we know that we're going to go for five years. So a sequence function, I think, is always handy for something like that. And we need to put our dates in. So probably the easiest way to do that is to use an E date. So that's my start date. That's my years. And then we'll just multiply it by 12 to give us our month. And we lose our formatting control shift three to add our formatting back in. So we know that our cash flows are going to be 25 million each year. There we go. So we can put that in as a start for five years. And we know that it is going to be financed by 75 of debt and 25 of equity. So let's put in our debt and equity, 75 and 25 there. And with a lot of these problems, we need to have a little uh, debt schedule. So let's put in the opening debt and then we are told that we have 15 million repayment each year and then we have our closing debt. So we have our opening, which will be 75 and we've got our repayments, which will be 15. Alt equals, which will give us our closing. Now I am not going to try and do fancy dynamic arrays here. It is going to be quicker to just do it the old way where you just copy it across like that. And if I've got this right, the whole thing gets paid back over five years. All right. And then we can just work out our interest. And we're told that's 4%. This formatting is, uh, is bothering me. So I'm going to just go in and just go in. It's a million dollars. So I'll just put in the currency. There we go. That's probably a good start. Uh, and then we'll copy the formatting for that. Okay. And so our interest is going to be based on our opening 
multiplied by 4%. Okay, looking good. So the problem that we've been given is we need to calculate the IRR of the equity of cash flows. And this is based on whatever has been distributed to equity. So we basically need to work out the cash flow to equity, and then we can run an IRR over that. And we can work out the cash flow to equity by saying the cash flow, that amount there, and we we'll deduct the repayments. So just be careful of our signs here. And then I've done my interest as a positive amount, so I just need to deduct that. Okay, so that is going to give me my cash flow to equity. And from that, I can work out my IRR and the equity will be that amount there, minus one. IRR, that gives me 18% at a couple of decimal places. Let's see, 18, oh, okay, that is not exactly right. So you can see that I am a couple of decimal places out. And if we look back to the question, ah, it tells us to use the XIRR function. Okay, let's see if that makes a difference. So instead of using the IRR, Let's use the XIRR, which should be something very, very similar because we have the dates in here. We go 80380. That's much better. So that is the correct answer to that one. So that's surprising. Uh, there is a slight difference between the way that the IRR and the XIRR calculates to do with the timing and it makes just a very small difference. So it just goes to show it's really important to read the instructions on a question like this. Okay, so that's the first question. Let's go over to the second question now. Now suppose the repayments were sized to equity. Okay, so we need to do pretty much the same thing, but we need to change the repayments. So coming back to my model, I don't want to play around with this. I want to leave that the way it was. So I'm just going to copy it, hold down the control key and drag my tab. So I've created another tab exactly the same. So I can copy my calculations and I'll just come back to here and I'll just copy my instructions from here into the top. Okay. So now it's exactly the same thing, except that the repayments are sized to annuity. So principal and interest is equal in every period. And it says that we should use the PPMT and the IPMT functions. Okay, let's give that a go. So we are going to have to change the repayments here and possibly the interest. Okay, so let's use the PPMT. Our rate is 4%. We are in period one. We can, let's try and make this dynamic. And uh, the number of periods is five. Now, normally I would never hard code and something like that, but I don't think this is going to change at this rate anyway. And the present value is the debt. So we get a spill. We can just remove that. There we go. Let's have a look. We can see that the total at the bottom here is 75. So the whole amount is being paid back. All of my calculations are still working. 18.86. Uh, eight, uh, so let's see. Okay, easy. All right, looks like I've got that one. All right. And so the last one is now suppose the repayments were front ended as possible. All right. So let's just copy, do the same thing here. Okay. And we want to repay the debt as fast as possible. All right. So what we need to do here, instead of doing what we need to pay in terms of the principal, instead, we are going to work out how much money we have left over and then use that to pay it down. So let's look at how much money we have. So we have our cash flow and we can just 
deduct our interest from there. I shouldn't get a circular reference because our interest is based on the opening debt, not the closing. So that should be okay. All right. Repayments. And I'll just make that a negative. Okay. All right. So it's going too far. We are paying too much. So we have 22 left over, 23, 24, and we continue to pay it down. So what I need to do is look at the minimum balance between what is available and what is left to pay. So how much cash do I have and how much do I have to pay? So I'll look at create a minimum between that and how much I have available. Okay, and that is uh, seems like it's going to cause a problem with my dynamic array. So this is one of those instances where perhaps using a dynamic array is not a great solution. So we'll just go back and say just C10 and we'll remove this part and remove the hash. Okay, so that is just using ordinary formulas. There we go. And copy it across. Okay, let's have a look. So it seems like it is doing its job and it's paying it down correctly. Let me just change my formatting there. So let's have a look. You can see that I have no cash left over in the first three years and I have a small amount there and I have no interest in the last couple of years. So you can see that this is perhaps one of those situations where mixing dynamic arrays and non-dynamic arrays is perhaps not a great idea. But let's have a look at the solution. So moving on, 12.8. Let's have a look and see if that is there. Yes, 12.8599. Yes. Okay. Looking good. Yeah. Interesting case. Uh, a couple of lessons learned in that one. So perhaps mixing dynamic arrays and non-dynamic arrays, not such a great idea, but in the heat of the moment, we do these things and always remember to read the question instructions properly. So give it a go for yourself. It's a great way to learn. Have fun with it and I'll see you next time.